Welcome to your quarter two project tutorial videos. This is the first time I've ever redone a video. Um, last year what we did is a little bit inefficient, so we're going to kind of redo the whole thing as far as these videos go. Bear with me, um, and we're going to make it better. So what I'm starting out here with is your standard bootstrap template, uh, just a starter one, this one actually in particular. Um, so we've got a standard bootstrap template, and I'm going to go through and just reassign all of the folder names to be where I'm actually keeping them. Um, this is an important thing to do. Don't forget to do it. I have already set up and downloaded Bootstrap. I'm actually using the, the last folder too. But I'm, I've already set up and downloaded Bootstrap into the uh, requisite folders just like you did last project. Nothing different about it. All right, we're going to go ahead and open up Index 2 in Chrome and see what it looks like. Uh, hmm. Looks pretty ugly. Uh, there's looks like the text is going underneath. That's because the nav bar needs to be a, instead of fixed. It should probably be static. There we go. And cool. All right, we got our project name, some links. We got our nav bar. Everything should scale. Hooray! Does this button work? Yes, it does. All right, great. Everything's working. All right. So the point of this project is to set up a review test um, for a particular class. This video assumes that you know what class it's going to be for. You've already spoken to your teacher, and you probably should have your content ready to go, but if you don't, it's okay. First thing we're going to do is just do some basic setup work. So, I mean, we definitely want to have, you know, the name of the, I guess, the test here. So let's say it's uh, AP Computer Science Review Midterm Review. All right, cool. That's going to go up there. It's a really long name. How about we just say APCS? And then in here we say AP Computer Science Midterm Review. Cool. All right, that looks a little bit better. Um, now, here's some just edits. I'm just going to make a quick edit. Uh, let's see. This is a review exam for your midterm. Sure. Okay. So what we need to set up in this particular section is we need to set up a place for some of our information to go. Now, you don't need to implement login in this project. We're just going to assume that that's all taken care of. This is about storing data, so we don't need to build an entirely functional login site. But we do want to set up um, you know, a pretty robust form system here so that you can collect questions. Now, every test should probably show what question somebody is on. And it should also display a number of choices. And, uh, you know, how you want to set it up is up to you. Uh, I prefer tests to be modular, meaning that you hit the next button and they go to the next question as opposed to just listing them all on the page. Uh, it's a little bit cleaner that way. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so let's set up a new container. It's going to be called container. Right, inside this container, we need a new bootstrap row. And on the left side of that row should be a column. Um, we'll make it not as big as the other side. We'll make it a four. We'll do a four and an eight. All right, so this should house the question, or excuse me, the question number and progress info. And then the other one should house question and choices. Cool. All right, so far so good. Let's just put some test information here. So this is question number 0 out of 10. Question. All right, great. So no styling yet, just placeholders there. All right, so because we're going to reference these from our JavaScript, we should probably give uh, probably a little bit more specific about how we put this stuff in here. So let's see, on the left hand side, I think I definitely want to have question number. So we're going to have to, we're, we're never going to need to update the number of total questions in our test, but we will need to update this piece right here, the current question. So let's go ahead and do something a little bit like this. We can say P, we can say ID, 
equals question indicator. Okay, and we'll leave it blank for now because we're actually going to set it in JavaScript later. All right, we also need to include a place for question text. as well as some buttons to provide choices. Now depending on the type of test you want to build, these are going to differ, but I'm assuming that you're mostly going to do a standard multiple choice test. So with multiple choice you're looking for various radio buttons. You can kind of Google what these look like if you want a different one, but for example radio button example in HTML. Input type radio. Okay, so that's pretty much how it works, and don't ignore these things for now. Um, we'll look at them later. So we need uh, new form, and inside that form we'll say input type radio, and there should be choice one. Radio choice two input type radio choice three. See what we're doing? Pretty uh, standard. Okay, and if we go ahead and refresh that, we should get just some radio buttons standing right next to each other. Doesn't really make too much sense because you can select all of them and they won't turn off, but that works for now. Um, now of course this isn't really utilizing what Bootstrap has to offer very well. We're going to go ahead and use a Bootstrap component called a input group. So if you go to their website, ooh, Bootstrap 4, no way, all right, anyway, input group. So here's a pretty basic example of an input group. They have it like this. And these are fantastic, I do have to tell you. So we're going to go ahead and get one of these. Let's just copy and paste the top one. And instead of each of these, we'll use each individual input group. Let's see. All right, so let's see. This is like an add-on on the left-hand side. We don't need that. That's not relevant. So this is giving like a text-based input. We don't really need text. We need the radio type, if you remember. Um, and let's see what happens if we have a placeholder on a radio. Nothing, but you can see it does get styled slightly, which is nice. Okay. Then if we have text on the side, it goes under it, which is sort of lame. Um, all right, so it, obviously this isn't going to work. How about if we want a bootstrap radio button? Oh, look at this. So it looks like we can do this with bootstrap radio buttons. And here you go. Okay, you can see how much you can get just by Googling some of this stuff. I really encourage you guys to start flexing those muscles. Um, it's very important. So anyway, I just ripped the example off of W3 schools. Here's option one, and let's see if it works. Bingo. Let's go ahead and do that for all four of them. One, two, three, four. Oop, only need one, two, three. Option two, option three, option four. We're going to need to make the names different. There we go. And magic. We did it. Pretty cool. And there's a bunch of options. And then question text, here's a question. All right, so we kind of get the idea here of how this is going to work. Um, pretty straightforward. OK, so you've set up your boxes. You've set up a question text. You've set up your, your form. We're going to actually have to give each of these choices an ID, because each question has different choices. So uh, we'll say choice one. Oh, wait a sec. I think we already used that. Did we use that? No. All 
right, so here are our different IDs. Cool. All right, the next step is to hook this up to our JavaScript so we can actually get some questions in here. So let's go ahead and make a new file. We're going to save it in our JavaScript folder of our project. Let's just call it my test. I'm just calling it my test2, but ignore that. We'll call it mytest.js. Then we have to link to it. We want to link to JavaScript at the bottom here. Script source equals JS, whatever your name is for your test. Cool. All right. Pretty nifty. All right, now I'm going to show you how to pipe in your first set of questions. So let's see. We want to do this when the document is done loading, when the page is done loading. So we're going to use a jQuery function that you should start to get a handle of called document.ready. You can Google the syntax. Now what this does is that this runs a function when your document has done has, is done loading. Okay, so that's important because sometimes you don't want things to run before your document is loading. For example, you don't want to start putting questions in here before uh, your document is loaded up. All right, cool. Let's think about how we're going to structure this. We probably need an array of questions, right? We need an array of questions, and we also need uh, maybe a multi-dimensional array of answers because for each question there are four answers. <clears throat> so in JavaScript it's very nice. We can go ahead and do that up top. We can declare a variable called question array. Make it blank. And we can declare a variable called answer array. Make it blank. So now we have two variables for question and answer set up. We also are going to need a variable to count the question we're currently on, which is zero. We're on the first one. And, uh, well, that's all for now. All right. So when the document is ready, we should probably have it show the first question. So we're going to make a method called, or excuse me, a function called variable display question is a function. Doesn't need any arguments. Just throw it like that, then we'll go ahead and call that right here. All right, so what are our questions going to look like? This is where it's going to change based on each one of your different contents. So I'm going to go ahead and type in some questions in my question array. Um, you should do that now as well, and I'm going to pause the video until I'm done. Questions in string form, of course, into this array. As you can see, there are five. You might have more. That's okay. Now we need answers. And as I said, this needs to be in the form of a multi-dimensional array. A multi-dimensional array is just an array of arrays. It gets deeper. Anyway, making it's easy enough. You just, in, you know, arrays have objects separated by commas. In this case, we're going to have another array. And then we need one for each question. There are five. And then we're just going to put our answers. So how many people are in this class? Let's say 18, 19, 24, 26. Okay, just like that. Separate it, and you want to have the number of choices equal to the number of uh, uh, radio buttons you programmed before. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it and fill these in. You should do the same. I have filled out my answer array to be an array of five arrays each containing the choices uh, required for the questions. So when we go to display each question, if we've done this properly, if we've set up our data structure properly, and this is where you know coding can get really pretty basically, this is really easy. Watch this. So if we're currently on question zero, remember you start from zero when you count in code, not one. If we're starting on question zero, all we have to do to display the question in our div or excuse me, in our paragraph called question text is this. We're keeping track of which question we're on. We have an array of all the questions. All we have to do is set this up. Check this out. Oh, 
Lou. Hey. I just sent you that text because I was like. This question right here, and that's just a function of us keeping track with question counter. For example, if question counter was one, instead it'll display the next question. Can you imagine what we're going to do with question counter as the program runs? If you guessed increment it, you're correct. All right, I'm going to write a similar function for display answers, but this will be a little bit trickier because we have four of them. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get each array of answers out of our answer array. So we're going to say variable answers equal answer array at zero, or excuse me, at question counter. And then we're going to write a for loop that loops through all these. Simple uh, loop that goes through an array, start at zero, go as long as i is less than answers.length, and increment i by one. You've seen that before. And then for each question, we're going to get the text out of it. So variable answer text is equal to answers at i. There you go. Okay, so we're looping through the array inside our answer array. Mind blown. The last thing we need to do is we need to put this into our radio buttons, which is a little bit tricky because they're not really stored in an array. Hmm. What can we do? Well, we did label it choice 1, 2, 3, and 4. Oops, one sec. Choice 2, choice 3, choice 4. So what if we kind of make a dynamic variable name in our loop and then just reference it that way. We can do it like this. Variable choice name is equal to choice plus, and it's going to start at zero, so we might want to say like that, plus i plus one, because the first one should be one. Okay. Um, and then we could say document dot get element by id choice name dot inner html is equal to answer text. Let's see if it works. It did not appear to work. <laughs> no errors. So, oh, we have to call the display answer function. Duh. No errors there either. Interesting. What did we do here? Display answers. Display question is working. Maybe we should log choice name and see if it's actually working the way we want it to. Oh, sure enough, it is working. Maybe you just can't do this. Document get element by ID. Sure enough. See, if it couldn't find it, though, it probably would say, like, there's an error. Right? See right there? Can't find inner HTML of null. Maybe this isn't how you set what's inside a radio button. Let's go ahead and check that out. Input. Oh, see, this isn't saying the input. It should be in the label, not the, not the input. Let's fix that once. See, the ID should be for the label not for the input. Yeah, there we go. Unfortunately, it does it does overwrite the actual radio button, which is not what we really want to do. So maybe we can put like something like this. Just put a p tag inside the label. And that should hopefully solve our problem. And sure enough, it does. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to put, instead of having the choice to ID inside the inputs, we're going to make a little p tag here and have this be choice to. Go ahead and do that for each one.
Okay, because we can't, you know, I hope that you see the problem there, that we can't um, set the HTML of the entire label because the input is inside of it. So if we just do it this way, we'll get our nice answers like that. All right, cool. So that does it for this video. You should be able to set your data structure up and your basic choices up. Um, we did not write a function to display the question number, but that should be pretty straightforward, right? Var display question number is a function. And what did we say was that? That was question indicator. So document.get element by ID question indicator dot inner HTML question plus question counter Ooh, but this one might need to be plus one and then it's going to be out of five questions for me yours will be different right, pretty straightforward right same thing that we're used to doing and we do need to run that display question number. But once you do, there you go. And you can display whatever you want here, but that's how you hook up your JavaScript to your HTML and get it all working. What we're going to do next is we're going to show how to check if a student's answer is correct. Um, and I'll show you that in the next video. But until then, happy coding!